If you signed up for a game of deadly dares with huge payouts, how far would you go? And how would you tackle the dares? These types of challenge games have a way of getting out of hand fast. These players are soon going to find themselves robbing cops and dodging trains, playing to an easily bored internet audience looking for its next thrill. I'm gonna break down the mistakes made by the players, see if we can make better decisions, and ultimately attempt to beat the deadly dares in Nerve. V Delmonico is just your average shy high school school photographer crushing hard on a guy who won't like her back and playing sidekick to her obnoxious best friend Sydney. Sydney's an ongoing player in an online game called Nerve. Internet viewers called Watchers vote on dares for you to do. If you complete the dare, increasing amounts of cash are deposited directly into your account. After Sydney embarrasses V in front of her crush, JP, and essentially calls her a coward, V signs up to be a player in Nerve. The Nerve app tells her that if she can complete enough dares to make it to the final Final two players. She'll compete in a winner takes all showdown. If she doesn't reach the final showdown or loses it, all the money she's won will be taken from her account. She's told that there's three rules. First, players have to film their dares on their own phones. Second, aside from winning a dare, she can bail or fail a dare by choosing not to play or running out of time. Third, snitches get stitches. She can't tell noobs about Nerve. That includes her overprotective mom. Nerve asks for her fingerprint and we we watch as Nerve absorbs all of our personal information off of social media to help design her dares. Her friend Tommy drives her to her first dare location at a diner, warning her that people have died playing the game. At the diner, she's told to kiss a stranger for 5 seconds for $100. V naturally picks the hottest chad in the place, Ian, who happens to be reading her favorite book. After she completes the dare, Ian serenades the entire diner, which they realize is also a Nerve dare. Ian admits to V that he was told to come to the diner and read that book while waiting for something. Tommy tells V that by joining Nerve, the Watchers stole information off of her social media and set up Ian to become her partner. They delivered her favorite book to him, knowing it would draw them together. You've seen this song and dance before in a thousand different movies. Person downloads shady app, shit escalates, person can't remove app, person dies. The dare for her to kiss a stranger for five seconds sounds innocent enough, but unless you look like Ian or V, someone's calling the cops and having you charged with assault and battery. There's still hope though. The dare itself could be cheated by simply asking a stranger to let you kiss their hand for five seconds, like you're serenading milady. Maybe that's weirder than a normal kiss, but it's also easier to pull off with consent, and it still satisfies the dare. Ian having her favorite book is nervous way of telling her that they have an invasive algorithm worming its way into all of her online information. It also suggests they have a wide and proactive network of people willing to do whatever Nerve says at the drop of a hat, turning anyone she meets into a potential enemy. Same thing with remote depositing $100 into her account. V didn't give them any banking information when she signed up but they found her account info anyways. They told her that she only gets to keep the money if she wins the whole game, which is their way of telling her that they can take money out of her account just as quickly as they can put money in. You might think the clever move would be to immediately sweep that USD into Bitcoin where it couldn't be confiscated, except Nerve isn't being played during business hours, and the entire game takes place within one night. You wouldn't be able to get a final settlement out of your bank quick enough to escape the game's clutches. More than that, the the three rules of the game are a sneaky little trap. One of the rules is snitches get stitches, but then how does anyone know the game exists? Sydney tells everyone she meets to log on to Nerve to watch her play. V immediately tells her best friend Tommy. Obviously, they don't want you telling the cops, but they never explicitly say, tell your friends, not the police. They also never tell you what they will do if you do snitch. But with invasive online access to your accounts and an anonymous network of potential murder for hire players, it's likely not good. The level of invasiveness and coordination required to pull this off is unnerving. V should be bailing on this game right now. She already proved herself. This is the pro gamer move called quitting while you're ahead. Nerve starts out innocent seeming as all properly sinister things do. I've been around the block enough to know that this will inevitably escalate to Russian roulette with extra steps or Russian roulette light. If you're not willing to risk life and limb in Nerve, might I suggest downloading Monster Legend?
Legends instead. Monster Legends is a free-to-play battle RPG mobile game with over 900 monsters to collect that puts your battle strategy and skills to the test. Monster Legends has a lot of really cool gaming features. Breed monsters of different elements and rarities to create cool new monster species. Level up your monsters and boost their powers with runes, relics, and talents to gain an advantage in the crazy combats ahead. Create your unique monster team to battle other monster masters in real-time live duels, or in the multiplayer mode where you can conquer trophies, win rewards, and fight for a chance to reach the top leagues. Monster Legends also just launched their newest era in the game, called the Blossom Era, focused on the awakening of the forces of nature with powerhouse nature monsters available in the new era. I also think the YouTuber Island feature is pretty cool. You can find monsters created in collaboration with some of the biggest YouTubers. Find your favorite YouTubers, check out their monsters and the awesome skills they chose for them, and put them to the test. Download the game now using my link in the description or my QR code to get 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster Kauri, which will up your status to get a head start and speed up your leveling process. It is a limited offer only, so make sure to download Monster Legends by April 10th to claim your rewards. Thanks Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. Ian and V's phones ring with a dare that pairs them together and sends them to Manhattan. Their next dare leads them into a super high-end department store. They're dared to change into $4,000 of clothing on camera. While they're trying on shoes, another Nerve player, Ty, sneaks into their dressing rooms and steals their clothes and wallets. When V and Ian realize their stuff is missing, the watchers dare them to leave the store for $2,500. To avoid having to shoplift, V comes up with a quick plan and they strip to their underwear and sneak through the department store to the exit. Their profiles on Nerve are blowing up. Outside, they find the expensive outfits waiting for them and directions to the location of their next dare. Driving with Ian on his motorcycle, trying on fancy clothes, and leaving the store all sound like super easy, harmless dares, but they're meant to seem that way. Nerve is playing by fear factor rules. If you aren't willing to eat 20 cockroaches, you shouldn't even be playing. At $2,500, Nerve is betting that V and Ian are too invested to quit because they don't get to keep the money if they don't keep completing dares. The dares escalate slowly, so that by the time they're dangerous and even deadly, you're too committed to turn back. Of course, there are a few things here that V should be watching out for. First, Ian is a total stranger and a competitor in Nerve. She probably shouldn't be going anywhere with him alone. Even though the risk of her being hurt or killed by a stranger is relatively low, him being a player in the game makes him a considerable threat if the whims of the internet audience turn against her. She also has a valuable resource on her side that she shouldn't be so willing to let go. Having a simp like Tommy, who's willing to drive all over the city for her, is like having a secret weapon. She should have ask him to follow behind him in his car, not only just in case Ian turns out to be a psycho, but also so that he can help if she needs him. Trying on clothing is an easy dare. The bigger challenge here is Nerve's dare to leave the store within two minutes after their clothing's been stolen. Shoplifting anything over $1,000 in New York can qualify as a felony and is punishable by one to seven years in prison, depending on whether she's charged with grand larceny or not. V's dress alone cost $4,000, so it's actually actually pretty clever to avoid shoplifting by removing the expensive outfits and darting for the exits in their underwear. New York City does not consider underwear alone to be full-on indecent exposure, so there's no good reason not to. It's also clever because it speaks to a part of the game that neither V nor E and ever really take into account, and that's the audience. The watchers aren't just voting on dares, they're essentially sponsoring players with their views, kind of like in the Hunger Games. Skirting the game and coming up with interesting ways to surprise the audience might have been all they needed to do to get on the audience's good side and avoid more terrible dares later on. Basically, you want to be in the clever romantic action genre, not in the degenerate humiliation horror genre. V's next dare is for $5,000. She has to let Ian pick a tattoo for her. Lucky for her, he picks the lighthouse from her favorite book. Meanwhile, Tommy uses a hacking app to find out Ian's secrets. He learns that Ian stole his motorcycle and has played Nerf before in Seattle. That game didn't end too well. Once they get back on his motorcycle, Ian receives his next dare. He has two minutes to go 60 miles an hour while blindfolded. Ian covers the visor of his helmet with a bumper sticker while V holds on for dear life. He sets off down a busy city street. They nearly hit a taxi and the concrete 
degree median before V realizes she has to help him steer by leaning. As the light turns red, she twists the throttle while weaving him through traffic. With seconds to spare, they hit 60 and barely stop in time to avoid crashing into a concrete wall. Alright, the game is finally escalating, but probably not in the way the watchers think it is. V and Ian could beat this one easily, using a technicality. The dare only says he has to go 60 miles per hour blindfolded. It doesn't say he has to use his motorcycle, or that he has to be driving, or that he has to go from 0 to 60. Ian could pay a cabbie to speed up to 60 while he's in the back seat with his helmet on. Or, he could speed up to 55 miles per hour with the visor raised, and then lower the blindfold at the last second as he hits 60. The only danger to tricking the game is that the watchers are voting on dares and changing them live. If the watchers don't like their technicality, their next dare could be more dangerous, or just straight up deadly. Ultimately, this is a gladiator style game where being entertaining matters just as much as completing the dare. And in that spirit, being charming while you cheat might be all you need to beat the game. Driving blind down a crowded New York City streets is insanely dangerous. Doubly so when you realize the city speed limit is 25 miles per hour. Every car they're going to have to avoid is going to be driving as if they're in a school zone at all times. The motorcycle they're riding is a 2015 Triumph Bonneville, which can go from 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. He does have another 100 pounds of V on the back, off-road tires, and the streets wet. That might drop them to a 6 second sprint. A quick displacement calculation tells us they're going to need around 260 feet to hit 60. We can see here that they seem to be traveling along Park Avenue South past East 26th Street. From street light to street light is about 260 feet. Feet. They do have to break, so they're going to need a double green light to clear 60 and stop. Traffic is the issue. V should have Ian block the traffic behind him while the street clears ahead of him. Then tell Ian to gun it. Even better, before Ian put on his blindfold, they should have driven to the tunnel, which offered a guaranteed 1,000 foot stretch of road without lights or crosswalks. Then block the cars behind them, flip down the blindfold, and gunned it. Sydney's jealousy spikes when she hears V badmouth her to Ian, and finds out V has more followers on Nerve than she does, and she begs the Watchers to assign her a bigger, badder dare. In response, the Watchers dare Sydney to cross a ladder 100 feet in the air between two buildings. Earlier, we learned that Sydney was afraid of heights, but I'm pretty sure you don't have to raid someone's social media to know that this is an insane dare. The ladder isn't even grounded or bolted down, and none of her friends are out here holding it for her. She shakes gets halfway across when she remembers she has to film herself, but it's too much when she sees herself on screen. She drops the phone and bails on the dare, disqualifying her from the rest of the current game. We don't actually see the wording of the dare to cheat our way through it, but we can be pretty sure swigging the rest of her booze wasn't part of it and definitely wouldn't help. Sydney can make this entire dare much easier on herself by fully extending the ladder between the two buildings. Ladders like this come with ladder locks that allow firefighters to extend ladders as far as they need to. Here, we see that the ladder is only partially extended, so the ends of the ladders are precariously close to the windows on either side of this alley. By extending the ends of the ladder farther into either apartment, Sydney can ensure that the ladder can't fall out of either window. She can also ask a friend on either side to hold the ladder steady for her or tie the ladder down somehow. Then, she can lay flat on the ladder and extend her legs to either side. This lowers her center of gravity significantly and increases her rotational inertia, steadying her on the ladder and making it almost impossible to fall off. It also means that if she feels like she's falling, she can wrap her legs tightly around the ladder, locking her ankles together. She could also probably pull a fire hose from a nearby stairwell and tie it around her waist as a makeshift fall arrest system, but that's kind of cheap. We want to put the odds in our favor, not neuter the entire dare. Additionally, she should have given someone her phone to film the scene from the safety of the window, so she could crawl across quickly and without all this drama. Getting halfway across and giving up is like going halfway across no man's land and turning around. Why? Either way, you still have to cover the same distance to come back inside. You might as well complete the dare. It's at this point we get a little movie intermission. We see other players doing their dares across the city. This guy takes a running leap over a subway track and cracks a few ribs for his effort, failing his dare. These guys crash into each other over a bonfire and end up roasting alive 
failing their dare, and YouTuber Casey Neistat tries and fails to steal a cop's gun off his belt. And lastly, we see Ty lay down on train tracks while the train passes overhead. He completes his dare. Welcome to the real game of Nerve, where the stakes are life and death and your adoring audience of watchers number in the tens of thousands. As a quick reminder, Nerve gets $20 per day per watcher. 44,000 people watch Casey try to steal that cop's gun. That's a minimum slush fund of $880,000 that Nerve is working with based on one player's watch count. It's likely that whoever is running Nerve is probably planting ideas for dares in the heads of its audience of watchers. The bigger the dare, the bigger the audience. So Nerve has every reason to go wild with the later stage dares. And every single one of these players should realize the escalation is probably gonna lead to a felony or a murder, if they live through their dares. As another quick reminder, given where these dares fall in terms of the others that we've seen, all of these dares were attempted for between $10,000 and $15,000. The bonfire and subway jump dares might be worth that, but going for a cop pistol or laying under the train are definitely not. The subway track jump is the least risky of them all, so long as the tunnel is empty. Your average subway track in New York City is 9 feet wide. This is essentially a long jump. The only problem here is that most professional long jumpers start 40 meters back from where they jump to get the most distance. That's not possible when an average subway platform is only 6 meters wide. If you want to get that distance, you would need to start further back, sprint forward diagonally, increasing your momentum as much as you can, especially in the last 3 steps before you turn in perpendicularly for the jump. As for the bonfire jump, we don't know what the dare actually told them to do, although it wouldn't make much sense to tell them to smash into each other over the fire, or for them both to be dared to jump the bonfire at the same time without each other knowing. That wouldn't be a dare they could win. We can guess, given the other dares, that it was probably something like jump the bonfire, in which case if both guys got the same dare, and knew each other got the same dare, they should have taken turns. If it said jump the bonfire together, obviously they should have started from the same side. As for Casey Neistat, his dare was probably just to steal a cop's gun. This is gonna be tricky. Cops usually wear retention holsters nowadays, so your finger would have to depress a mechanism on the side of the holster before the gun would come free, which would alert them to your presence. The charges for this sort of thing vary from state to state, with some minimum sentences of one to two years in prison for stealing a weapon. But we all know that he would likely be charged with multiple infractions, including, but not limited to assault of a police officer. Casey Neistat has millions of YouTube subs. He's famous, so he could just try asking the cops to unload the gun and let us take it from them. Again, a bit cheap, but it beats near certain death or imprisonment. I mean, the act was literally caught on camera. Finally, for Ty's train track stunt, you absolutely would not want to attempt this dare, because your best case scenario is a swift death. Most train track rails are around 6 inches tall. Every train has different undercarriage parts, which only need to clear the rails by around 6 inches. Considering the average man is around 11 to 12 inches wide, measuring from nips to butt, even the slenderest of males, like MGK, are going to be cutting it real, real fucking close. It gets worse. Most trains only require that the axle of the train clear the rails by 2.75 inches. That means we're down to 9, maybe 10 inches of clearance max now. Even worse, carts are connected with hoses and wires that have heavy metal fittings which can hang lower than the top of the rails. When a train is moving at 60 miles per hour, a blow from one of these bad boys would certainly remove you from existence. Not to mention the general debris that's dragged under trains all the time. So like I said, you'd probably end up a red jelly smear on that track. The game's down to just Ty, V, and Ian. When V arrives to Sid's party, they get into an argument that ends up with the watchers daring V to finish the dare Sydney couldn't. V climbs up onto the ladder and crosses with little difficulty, earning her first place in nerve. Afterward, Tommy reveals to V that Ian's dare was to bring her to the party and get her to fight with Sydney. Betrayed, V tries to tattle on nerve to a police officer before Ian can stop her. She's labeled a snitch by the watchers, and her mom's bank account is emptied in seconds. 
The same strategies for crossing the ladder applies here too. Ian, of course, is untrustworthy once V finds out he manipulated her for his own dare. But he should have immediately told her the truth before she even reached the elevator. Instead of mumbling about complications and not going to the cops, he should tell her that doing so will cost her everything, because it cost him everything. It's also supremely dumb to break one of the three rules of nerve now by going to the police. V has no evidence that the game is hurting people against their will. She does have evidence that Nerve has access to her bank account, and anonymous minions ready to punish her for breaking the rules. If she cares more about the betrayal than she does about the money, she could just reject the dare and end the game for herself here. That's the simplest and safest solution to her problems. Fortunately for V and her mom, even though Nerve emptied their joint bank account, the FDIC insures bank accounts up to $250,000, and they would most likely be able to recover their money after a few tedious conversations with her bank and local police. This snitching thing is either an intentional setup by Nerve to entrap players to use in later games, or it's a huge mistake on their part. A brief disclaimer at the beginning warning players that they'll ruin their lives if they snitch would prevent players from even thinking about snitching in the first place. V tries to run when Ty shows up and punches her out. She wakes up in a shipping container with a computer. A robotic voice from Nerve tells her that they control her life now. If she doesn't win the entire game, her life will be destroyed. She breaks out and finds herself in a shipping port being chased by watchers. Ian finds her and finally tells Tells her his secret. He played the game before in Seattle, and a fellow player died. He tried to snitch to the cops, and his entire life was destroyed. He became a prisoner of the game forced to change his name, move, and play the game again. If he loses, he dies. He tells her he's going to stop Ty from getting second place, and when it's down to him and V, he'll lose on purpose to save her life. Despite getting knocked out cold and bouncing her head off the pavement, she still needs to finish this game. Sure, she probably needs to go to a hospital, but failing this game is certain to cause a lot of damage. The show must go on. However, Ian's little game plan is eerily similar to Eric's at the end of the circle. Because Ian withheld his history with Nerve from V without any foreseeable motive, it makes me believe he can't be trusted. Ian claims he's gonna knock Ty out of the game so that it's just V and him in the final finals, and then he will throw the game so V can win. It's hard to believe that Ian is such a nice guy that he would throw the chance to get his and his family's life back to save a girl he only just met a few hours ago. I would suspect he wants V in the finals with him because she would be easier to eliminate than Ty, and wouldn't see the betrayal coming. If I was V, I would be prepared for Ian to double cross me in the finals to take victory for himself, but besides being on the lookout for a likely double cross, there isn't much else V can do except to prepare for the final dare. While V tries to strategize a way to take down Nerve, Ian and Ty arrive for the next dare, a replay of the failed dare from the Seattle game. Ian's dare is to hang 100 stories up by one hand for 5 seconds. Ty bails, and Ian completes his dare. Because Ian has played Nerve before, and gotten this dare before, he should have prepared by wearing rubber gloves and even keeping chalk in his pockets. He could also cheat a little by wrapping more of his arm around the pole rather than just his hand, or by having the foresight to thread a rope through his belt loops, up the sleeve of his jacket, and around the pole for a little added protection against a fall. But it risks him being discovered and disqualified. Of course, better that than a long drop and a sudden stop. V heads for the Staten Island Ferry, while Tommy and Sydney head for a hacker group to help break nerve. On the ferry, a masked man leaves a package for her. Inside, she finds a loaded revolver, which she presents as her ticket at the dare. The last dare is in an aqueduct coliseum for an audience as drones broadcast live to watchers across the city. Ian and V draw their weapons. Ian has a 9mm. They have 20 seconds to shoot their opponent. When V can't go through, through with it, Ty leaps down from the crowd ready to shoot. V tries to argue her case, but the crowd calls for blood. V dares Ty to shoot her. The crowd gets the final say, yes or no. The vote comes back yes, and Ty shoots her. V falls. Seconds later, hackers break through Nerve's firewalls and expose the identity of each watcher on their phone. Each watcher is told they're an accessory to murder. People start bailing in waves, and V sits up revealing it was a setup. The round was a blank, and Ty was part of her plan to end Nerve. As the last watcher signs off, the hackers close Nerve down and give V's mom her money back. 
V is risking far too much here for far too little reward. Getting Nerf to go offline is a temporary solution to a bigger problem. Nerf can easily be rebooted later, and she's putting herself, Ian, and Ty in a position to potentially commit murder or accidentally get someone else murked by an angry boyfriend. At the very least, V should have told Ian about her plan with Ty. Without telling him, she risks Ian shooting Ty before she can reveal that she's not dead. V could have just as easily been double-crossed by Ty and Ian here. She should have stopped at a hardware store and picked up some makeshift quarter-inch steel body armor to slip under her hoodie like Nick Memphis and shoot her, or buy level 1 body armor from a police supply store if there's one nearby. Of course, that wouldn't help if Ty or Ian managed to shoot her in the head. V could have told police or let the officer on the ferry find the gun in the package that she swiped. If she had warned police, they could have been waiting outside the Coliseum. They might luck into detaining one of the actual middle managers of Nerve, even if if Nerve is open source, like Tommy says, it would still need a centralized place to keep the money and disseminate information, and it's likely one or several of these people would be present for the final showdown. If she didn't want to snitch again, the simplest way to win the bet and end the game in her favor is simply to use the vagueness of the dare to her advantage. Shoot your opponent. Technically, she could walk up to Ian, press the gun to the meaty, non-vital part of his arm, and fire, and still win the showdown. The worst way to try to beat this situation is to place your life at the mercy of the mob. Mob mentality leads to hurting behavior, which can cause groups of intelligent people to lean on the collective fear or aggression of a group to make choices for them. In this case, to vote to kill V. V's quick thinking may have saved her from the whims of the Watchers for now, but she made some reckless choices that risked more than she stood to earn, and the ending relied on her having connections to a hacker group that I'm betting most of us wouldn't have access to if we were in the same situation. Not to mention, we know nerve happens all over the country. Her hacker friends only shut down one city, and whoever made the app and code still has it. This feels like a happily ever after that's more fantasy than fact. If Mr. Robot isn't your best friend, the nerve game would likely remain unbeaten. However, there were several points at which V could have bowed out of the dares and avoided pain and potential death at the hands of an unruly mob. Most of the early dares were relatively easy, and later dares could be rejected, giving V a relatively safe get-out-of-death-free car that she could play most of the time. Ultimately, if she hadn't broken Nerve's game's rules, cheated all the dares in an entertaining way with our help, she would have won the game without any punishments incurred. With that in mind, I think the deadly dares in Nerve were beaten. Thanks for watching, and remember the classic SAS motto, who dares wins. Well, sometimes. Sometimes you die. Dares are risky things. And don't forget to download Monster Legends and get cool rewards with my link in the description.